everybody. I am here because we have reached the end of the carnivore meatloaf recipe relay. And first and foremost, I want to thank all of the wonderful ladies who participated in this relay. I'm definitely going to have links down below in the description to all of the recipes in order how the relay went down. But the gist of the relay is I made a very simple and basic meatloaf. And then I passed that meatloaf baton right on to another YouTuber who added one ingredient. That was the main rule that you had to add one ingredient. But there was also the caveat that you could change the form. So instead of a meatloaf, you could do, for example, like Elliot Nourishment Redacted did. She did meatloaf balls. Um, I think most of us did meat loafs, though. Um, and then at the end, it was um, Nia from Nia's Way. And now I am going to do my very best to make her version of the carnivore meatloaf. She had the final leg of the relay. And boy, did she do a great job. So the very first thing I'm going to do is kind of um, par-bake, to use Robin Carnivorous Grandma's term, par-bake. Uh, the bacon, which I think just gets it a little bit cooked, not cooked all the way through, but that way when you're baking it at the end, it will get nice and crispy. I don't think I'm going to have to cut my bacon strips thinner because I am using my bacon ends and pieces. Best deal on bacon, you guys. It's $2.99 a pound, but it's all the little leftover trimmings and pieces uh, from when they cut the nice, pretty bacon strips. So it's exactly the same bacon. It's just a little odd shaped, um, but I love it. It's such a great deal for those of us that do eat bacon in our way of eating. So I'm about to get my bacon ready. I've got it right here. I am going to put some parchment paper on this pan. I've got my oven set for 375, and I'm just going to do that for about 10 minutes just to get it, like I said, a, the cooking process started, but definitely not finished. It's gonna finish on that meatloaf. So I'm gonna go get that par baking done and then we will come back and we will put this meatloaf together. I did make one change to Nia's recipe, so stay tuned for that and find out why I made that change. All right, here we go. All right, you guys, I've got my bacon all ready to go on the tray with the parchment paper. I'm going to pop it in the oven. Hey, clearly, I've got my camera angle changed here so you can see into my bowl. And maybe you can tell the difference between these two meats. So I do have one pound of 80-20 ground beef. And this other meat here is not breakfast sausage, you guys. It is ground pork from Wild Pastures. And that is some pasture-raised pork that I bought. Now, here's the reason that I did not do the breakfast sausage. It's not that I don't think that would be delicious. I think it would be amazingly delicious. But as you know, I am a teacher, or as you may know, I'm a teacher. And in my school district, teachers do not get paid in December. We get that month off for Christmas, or at least we get three weeks off for Christmas, um, but we also do not get a paycheck in December. Um, and because of that, I had planned ahead and I had stocked up on some wild pastures meat last month. So you guys, I'm using up what I had. So what I had was some ground pork, um, which is, you know, what is that? Like breakfast sausage, but without the seasonings in there. And that timer is my, uh, my bacon being done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out right now. Um, and I'll hold it under the camera so you can see what that looks like. So give me a second. All right, you guys, so here's that bacon. Again, it's not fully done. It has started to render. It is par-baked. And this is the bacon that I'll be placing on top of the meatloaf at the end. Okay, and I did that at 375, so I'm going to go ahead and now set my oven for 350, which is the meatloaf temperature. Okay, back to the meatloaf. So two pounds of meat. I've got my three-quarter cups pork, porking good, regular flavor. Um, they are seasoned, but they're just the regular, not flavored uh, pork rind crumbs. I like to use those. I, I do not crush my own. Everybody else crushed their own. That was pretty cool. Anyways, I've got my two eggs. So there's one and there's two eggs. 
And I did learn my lesson on the salt. So I do use the Redmond Real Salt, the fine sea salt. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a full teaspoon, one full teaspoon. So the pork rind crumbs are seasoned, but last time I found myself wanting for some more salt. I definitely salted um, each piece of meatloaf as I ate it the last time I made this. So I definitely wanted some more salt in this. Okay, so that's my meat mixture. So it's the two pounds of meat, the pork rind crumbs, the eggs, and the salt. I'm going to get my hands in there and get this mixed up. Remember, thank you to Carnivorous Grandma. Remember not to over mix. You kind of want to leave some air pockets in this. It will keep your meatloaf tender. This is so therapeutic. I think I said last time in my original, uh, in my original video, I said it takes me back to my Play-Doh days. It's very therapeutic to get your hands in here and kind of mush this around. Some people wear gloves and that's okay too, but I just like to get my hands right in there and squish. <laughs> that's a technical term, you guys, uh, squish. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to move this aside. And I still have a link in the description for this pan. This was a really good purchase. This is the meatloaf pan. I talked about it in my original video. Nia bought the same pan and she used it in her video. And it was uh, very helpful for her. She enjoyed using it as far as I could tell. Now, I did notice that in Nia's video, she said that her cream cheese was a little low. So I'm going to attempt to get my cream cheese a little higher. I don't know if I can do it. We're gonna give, give it a try. So I'm gonna press about probably a little more than half, maybe. Maybe try to do a little more than half. This is not scientific. I did not weigh it out <laughs> to get that. I'm just eyeballing it, but I know that the two pounds of meat sort of fills up, um, fills up this pan. Two pounds of meat fills it up. So I'm gonna do, that and I what I did was this is about a stick a full stick of cream cheese and I'm gonna start pressing these little squares of cream cheese into the meat let's kind of press them in there So my original recipe had no surprise in the middle, except meat. There was meat in the middle. I mean, that's pretty good, <laughs> but it wasn't a surprise. This I think is gonna look so pretty when it's cut open. So what a fabulous, fabulous addition. Oh my gosh, wow. That worked out just about perfect. I have three little squares left it's going to fit right here on the end nice all right and make it fit I don't want cheese sticking out try to make it make the meat there on the end okay now the rest of the meat mixture is going to go right here on the top of the cream cheese We'll see once this bakes if I succeeded in getting my cream cheese a little more. I don't think it'll be centered. Mine might be a little high, Nia. At Nia, this might be, you might have gotten your cream cheese a little low. Mine might be a little high. I don't know. We'll find out. I guess you don't really know till you bake it because then everything kind of settles. Like the grease, you know, comes out. Some of the grease comes out. Everything kind of settles. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see at the end how that went down. Okay, so I'm going to wash my hands and then we're going to talk about the toppings for this meatloaf. Toppings. I have this bacon that I did. I'm going to lay this on the top. Again, I par baked it, so it is not totally cooked through, but it's a little bit cooked. And these are the bacon ends and pieces, which is why they're kind of in these interesting shapes, but I'm going to puzzle it together and see if I can fit all of this bacon on here. 
I will tell you that I am going to put cheese, but I did not have shredded cheese, already shredded cheese, nor did I have a block of cheese to shred. So what I have, and again, because we don't get paid in December, I am working with what I have. What I have is some sliced, like already sliced cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and use up that already sliced cheese, but I'm gonna wait to put that on in the last like 10 minutes of cooking just to get some melty cheese right on the top. I mean, you guys, look at that, fantastic. So since I made the, since I baked up the bacon already, my oven is ready, it's at 350. I'm going to bake this for 55 minutes at 350 but at 45 minutes i'm going to take it out i'm going to put the cheese on and i will show you guys that step when i do it bake it for 10 more minutes and then we'll give this a taste and see how it is okay i'm going to see if i can one hand film myself putting this in the oven here we go all right little meatloaf do your thing Okay, my meatloaf has been cooking for 45 minutes. Now, like I said for this recipe, I am making Nia's version, but I am doing things, I'm using things that I already have. So what I already have in terms of cheese is these little slices of cheese that I had purchased for a charcuterie board. So these are cheddar, these particular ones, but I'm gonna switch it up. So I'm gonna do a couple of cheddar and this is Havarti, a couple of Havarti. And then we'll go back to cheddar. And Havarti. And then the end, there's room. I'm just going to break one of these in half. Fit it in on the end there. And then I think what I'm gonna do is every other one up the middle. Ho ho ho, look at that. And a cheddar. I have I had bought this for a charcuterie board, and there's quite a bit of it left because it was from Costco, you guys. So I've got plenty of these little cheese slices. Might as well, might as well do this. That's looking delicious. Like a checkerboard. A checkerboard of cheese. And there you have it. All right, back in the oven. This is gonna go for 10 more minutes just to, to melt this cheese over the top. You guys, this looks so good. I mean, the checkerboard of cheese did not disappoint. It looks delicious. I am impatient. I don't wanna wait for that to cool down. <laughs> Oh, all right. I'm going to give it a few minutes to cool down and then I will be back to taste it. I can hardly wait. I mean, right? So good. Okay, everybody, this meatloaf looks 100% fantastic. Thank you, everyone, because I got such wonderful ideas from each of you. And I think that it really gave people kind of a plethora of meatloaf choices, right? It shows how customizable this thing is um, to meet any needs, preferences, um, dietary options, you know, whatever you have going on in your carnivore way of eating. So thank you to each of you. I had a blast. I hope you guys will participate with me in another relay in the future. Um, but without any further flapping of the gums, I'm going to cut into this and we're going to give it a taste. So I wanted to show you guys where the cream cheese is. So Nia, your cream cheese was low. I was right. My cream cheese is high. <laughs> well, delicious cream cheese is delicious cream cheese. So I'm going to grab a fork. Hey, I was not shy about the portion size. This looks delicious, you guys. Here we go. Okay, a few things. My original meatloaf was good, no doubt about it, but it was a basic 
meatloaf with just the beef, egg, and some pork rind for some binder. And that was it. The pork in here gives this an added, I don't know, fattiness. And then you've got the cream cheese. That's just delectable. The bacon and then the other cheese on top, the checkerboard of cheese <laughs> that I created. Uh, this kicks this meatloaf up to another level. So thanks again, everybody. I hope you'll give this one a try or any of the other meatloafs along our relay path. Links below to all of those recipes will be in the description as well as the link to my meatloaf pan if you're interested in giving it a try. It's super helpful. Uh, drains out all the um, extra grease and just makes for a really good tasting meatloaf. So I am going to go meet some wellness. One meatloaf with a checkerboard of cheese at a time. Bye, everybody.